Hey guys, Dr. Davenlin, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about dermal filler reactions in the presence of COVID vaccine. So the uh, newest COVID vaccine that's just been released in the US less than two weeks ago is the Modena vaccine. Uh, and that vaccine has been associated with dermal filler reactions. So if you've had dermal fillers, if you're one of those 3 million uh, people in the US who've had dermal fillers, this video may be very important. And for those who are considering dermal fillers, maybe this video can alleviate your fears. So what's happened? In the last one week, there's been three, yes, three reported cases of dermal filler swelling, dermal filler reactions after the vaccine. So most of the time it occurs within a day to three after the vaccine. Three reported cases, two in the cheeks, uh, one on the lips. And the time frame from which you've had the filler to, to the vaccine has ranged from six months all the way to two days before. How common is this? Very. How common will it be? I reckon it's going to be very common. So there's conflicting stuff in the literature. Uh, one report says out of the 10,000 people that have had three reactions. Considering America's got 3 million people who've had fillers, uh, I think you're going to have a big spike in these reactions. Um, and Australia will follow suit and also the UK very shortly. So how, what, what happens? What do you do? First thing to do is don't panic. Most cases, in fact, all cases to date, so all three cases, have resolved without the need for dissolving the filler. So if you've invested 10, 12, 15 units in your face, you don't need to get it resolved um, because most of the time conservative treatment can, uh, can basically just calm down the reaction. So first things first, why does this happen? Basically with a vaccination, we're raising antibodies. In other words, it's an immune reaction. What we want to do with the vaccine is we want to wake up the immune system, we want to stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies to specific proteins on uh, viruses or cells. Now, the spike protein of the uh, virus, of the coronavirus, is the target. So basically, uh, a vaccination is induction of antibodies against this spike protein. Now, your immune system is very smart, but sometimes it's not smart enough to uh, differentiate between the virus or bacteria and filler because fillers are still exogenous yeah so they're not even though they're hyaluronic acid they're cross-linked um, and they still have an antigenetic uh, potential in other words a potential to cause your immune system to actually rev up and this is why it happens is it common yes <laughs> as dermatologists and plastic surgeons we see this a lot. When I mean a lot, basically um, I have at least one case every three, four weeks. Uh, and that's been going on for the last, God knows what, eight, nine, ten years. So as a specialist, when we have one of these reactions, we don't panic. We don't go, geez, what's causing it? Um, how do we treat it? We basically treat it. And the vast majority of times it actually resolves. So what fillers, generally speaking, cause this problem? It's usually the hyaluronic acid fillers. So in that family, you have the juvederms, and with that, you have the, the Voluma, the Volif, the Volux, uh, and then you have your Bolotero, and then you have your Restylane, and it's a whole heap of other hyaluronic acid fillers, depending on where you live. Can it occur with other fillers, so collagen-stimulating fillers? So when it comes to, I guess, Sculptra, which is your PLLA, which is your poly-L lactic acid, yes, delayed nodules have been reported. Your Radius, which is your calcium hydroxyl appetite, uh, the delayed nodules, not very common at all. I haven't seen any with radius, but I see a lot, I mean a lot with the Juvederm. Now, one of our theories is that possibly the Vicross technology, which is basically a cross-linking of the molecules, could increase the um, chances of Juva uh, to have these delayed nodules. The other thing as well is that in Australia, a lot of uh, clinics actually use Juvederm, so they may have a, uh, I guess, unfair representation compared to other fillers. So how do we treat these delayed nodules? First thing to do is to make sure they're actually a delayed nodule reaction. Delayed nodule reaction, as the name suggests, is delayed. So it normally occurs uh, anywhere between two to four weeks or longer after the actual uh, filler itself. So in the US, there were two cases that were around six months and one case which was two days before. So with these delayed nodules, it's very different, very, very different from infection, um, very different from things like biofilm. Most cases, like I said, can be settled down. How do specialists actually settle that down? First of all, 
the, the fill-up reaction is, is somewhat unusual because you get swelling not only of one site, but other areas which, um, which you've had filler. So it may, if you've had filler in your cheeks and, you, and, you, and your lips, some cases uh, there's a global um, swelling. In some cases you'll have swelling uh, just on one particular type of filler. For example, if you're using Restylane or, or using something like Juvederm, you may have a reaction with Restylane, you may not have something with Juvederm or conversely so. But it can also affect all the filler sites. So, you know, if you've had 10 mils of filler, chances are you're gonna swell up in all those areas. So how do we treat it? First of all, exclude all the other causes. Uh, thereafter, it's pretty easy. Um, a, a, you know, a short, sharp dose of prednisone, an anti-inflammatory taken orally. I normally give about 50 milligrams. I taper it over about four to five days, um, but then I still keep it at a, at a lower dose, something like 10 milligrams, and then slowly taper it over uh, two weeks or so. I also give um, an antihistamine, something like Zyrtec or Citrilazine, and I normally do that uh, usually twice to three times a day. Yes, I know the product information says once a day, but it's super safe twice a day. Uh, and I normally do that for the duration of treatment. I personally give a anti-inflammatory called doxycycline as well. Many reasons why, sometimes to cover against a biofilm, but that's not the real reason. It's an anti-inflammatory. I normally use 50 milligrams twice a day. And I usually, that's the last one that I would try to taper. So most patients can start tapering their dose usually at um, the first week. Some patients may actually require uh, a slower taper, usually over four, sometimes even eight weeks. Certainly if you have other causes or other suspicions, your doctor will actually rule out all the other weird stuff that can cause this cross reaction, things like tuberculosis, urinary tract infections, um, sarcoid, the whole lot. So leave it up to your uh, physician to actually sort that out. Should you not get the vaccine because of this? The answer is no. You should get the vaccine. Don't be an absolute tosser or wanker, right? Because um, there's a lot of people out there who need your help. For all of you guys who've got uh, filler and, um, and, and, and not, do not want the actual vaccine, I think that's absolutely friggin' um, hypocritical. I'll tell you why, it's because do you realize the filler is actually a purified version or, or attenuated or purified of uh, sugar molecules which are derived from strep. Streptococcus is a very, very nasty bacteria, but in the scheme of things, it can be produced, well, it can produce sugar molecules, which are basically hyaluronic acid. So you've got these big vats of streptococcus uh, producing hyaluronic acid, and what the company does is that they treat this hyaluronic acid with heat, usually at about 110 to 120 degrees, for anywhere up to five to 15 minutes. That kills the strep. So guys, if you've got fillers and you don't want uh, frigging the vaccine because it's unnatural, you've got that shit in your face anyway. So guys, do the right thing. I personally, I've got nine mils. That's right, nine mils of filler, mostly my, my jawline. I've got a mil here and here uh, since 2016. So the product which I've got, Jibberdam. So chances are, if I'm gonna react, it's gonna react to this. I think this is unprecedented times. Reason being is that um, apart from the smallpox, I guess, on mass vaccination, which was way back then, I can't remember that. I was too, well, I wasn't even born. But um, this is unprecedented time, guys, because we, we're getting basically five billion people getting vaccinated, in theory, in the next 12 months. So when you see that kind of figures, your figures for, um, I guess, vaccination side effects will skyrocket. I think um, we're gonna see a lot more cases. When I mean a lot, I mean a lot more cases. The US, like I said, has got three million people with dermal fillers. Australia, I can't find the stats, but there's gonna be heaps. So guys, whatever you do, don't panic. If you start to swell, see your doctor. You don't need to dissolve stuff in the majority of cases. Guys, stay safe, do the right thing. Uh, please share, subscribe, chime your thoughts. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.